Hello students, welcome to your next lecture. Today's topic is image forming mechanism of eye and the physiology of vision. First thing first is the overview of today's lecture. In this lecture, I will discuss about the principles of optics and optics of the eye briefly. You will understand the concept of reduced eye, accommodation and errors of refraction. You will understand what is hypermetropia, myopia and presbyopia. And lastly, I will discuss about the various layers of retina, the photoreceptors and phototransduction. The functioning of human eye can be compared with a color television camera in which your eyelids acts as a shutter to protect the interior of the eye. The cornea and lens acts as a focusing system to focus the objects. The iris acts as a diaphragm that regulates the aperture size and controls how much light should enter the eye. The choroid and pigment epithelium of the retina helps to form a dark interior of the camera that is your eye. The neural retina acts as a light sensitive plate and the optic nerve and its connections convey or relay the visual impulses from retina to the cerebral cortex of brain. To understand the optics of eye and its abnormalities like errors of refraction etc. It is very important to have a little knowledge about the light and geometrical optics. You all must be knowing this that light is the visible portion of the electromagnetic radiations that are present in the atmosphere. The light what we see is white light which is made up of seven colors that is represented by the term Vibagyur, V for violet, I for indigo, B for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange and R for red. These seven colors of the rainbow have wavelengths ranging between 400 to 700 nanometer. 400 nanometer is for violet color beyond which comes the ultraviolet waves that are invisible to the human eye and 700 nanometer is for red color and beyond it comes the invisible infrared waves. Now you must understand the difference in the meaning of two terms namely reflection and refraction of light. When light rays travel in the same media for example air, the change in the direction of the rays after striking a substance is called as reflection of light. Whereas when light rays travel from one media to another media for example from air to water they change their path and this is called as refraction. There are two types of lenses, the spherical lens and the cylindrical lens. Human eye has spherical lens. The cylindrical lens have power in only one axis and the other axis has got zero power. You can identify a cylindrical lens by rotating it around its optical axis. You will see that the object seen through a cylindrical lens becomes distorted. Spherical lenses can be convex or concave type. Human eye have biconcave spherical lens. The convex lenses are converging lenses that is when light rays pass through convex lens they refract and move towards each other. Convex lens have positive power. They can be biconvex, planoconvex or concavoconvex type. How to identify a convex lens? When you hold a convex lens in your hand and observe it, you will see that the center of the lens is thick when compared to the periphery. Also, the objects seen through it will appear larger than the ob object's original size. And when you move the lens, the object seen through the lens will move in the opposite direction. Whereas a concave lens are diverging lenses that is light of rays after passing through a concave lens tend to move away from each other. These are negative powered lenses and they can be biconcave, planoconcave and convexoconcave type. How to identify a concave lens? When you hold a concave lens in your hands and observe it you will notice that the center of the lens is thin when compared to the periphery 
and also the object seen through it will appear smaller than the original size and when you move the lens the object seen through it will move in the same direction now come to the topic optics of the eye as an optical instrument the focusing system of the eye is composed of several refracting structures the various refractive indices of the different media of eye are cornea has refractive index of 1.37 aqueous humor and vitreous humor has 1.33 and the crystalline lens has got the refractive index of 1.42 together all this media form a homocentric system of lenses that has a strong refracting system with a short focal length so consider your eyes as the superior form of a digital camera that has a total power of plus 60 diopter where plus 44 diopter of the power is due to the cornea itself and the remaining plus 16 diopter of the power comes from the lens now let us understand the concept of reduced eye or schematic eye briefly since the optics of eye is complex to understand properly a scientist named listing simplified the data by choosing only one single principal and a single nodal point between two principal and two nodal points so whenever you will do practical calculations you will use the datas of the listing's reduced eye according to this concept the simplified eye uh, have following features firstly the power the power of reduced eye is plus 60 diopter secondly the principal point and the nodal point so the principal point of a schematic eye lies about 1.5 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea whereas the nodal point n lies about 7.2 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea the anterior focal point f1 is 15.7 mm in front and the posterior focal point f2 is 24.4 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea whereas the anterior and the posterior focal lens that is pf1 and pf2 respectively are at 17.2 mm and 22.9 mm the next topic is accommodation accommodation is the ability of the eye to focus an object that is at varying distance in simple terms accommodation means to focus a near object without straining your eyes to see it clearly the major change that occurs during accommodation is the change in the anterior surface of the lens normally when the eye is at rest the lens is kept flat by the tensed zonules or suspensory ligaments of eye during accommodation the motor command comes from the brain via the third cranial nerve to the ciliary muscles of the eye and they contract the contraction of the ciliary muscles pull the ciliary body forwards and inwards and it causes laxity or relaxation of the suspensory ligaments ultimately this leads to the bulging of the lens now this entire mechanism of contraction of various muscles of eye during accommodation is called as accommodation reflex accommodation reflex is a bilateral reflex this near reflex has got three part responses whenever a person sees a nearby object and these are firstly the contraction of ciliary muscle that changes the anterior curvature of the lens second is the constriction of the pupil due to contraction of the sphincter pupillae muscle and third is the convergence of visual axis due to the contraction of medial rectus muscle of the eye the all the three components of this reflex occur at the same time during an accommodation reflex human eye has a near point and a far point in a normal eye that is emetropic eye the far point is set at infinity whereas the near point varies with age for example for a 10 years old child who has a normal eye the near point is 7 cm it means that 
till this point he or she can see the near objects clearly if he or she moves the object more closer to self or the distance becomes less than 7 cm he or she will not be able to see a clear image similarly for 30 years old person the near point is at 12 cm and so on so it is very clear that the near point of a person keeps on increasing with increase in the age next topic is errors of refraction there are three types of errors of refraction that can occur in human beings these are hypermetropia or hyperopia also called as long sightedness myopia or short sightedness and astigmatism now before i start discussing in detail about each one of them you must be clear with the terms emetropia and ametropia emetropia is an optically normal eye where the parallel rays of light coming from infinity enters the eye and gets focused exactly on the retina the accommodation being at rest whereas ametropia means a condition where the parallel rays of light either focus in front of the retina or behind it the accommodation being at rest let us see the first type of error of refraction that is hypermetropia it is a condition or refractive state of the eye where the parallel rays of light coming from infinity gets focused behind the retina with accommodation at rest thus the image formed will not be clear hypermetropia can be of many types based upon the etiology or the cause it can be axial hypermetropia which is the most common type it can be curvational hypermetropia or index hypermetropia it can be positional hypermetropia and it can be due to the absence of the crystalline lens a person suffering from hypermetropia will have the following characteristic features or signs and symptoms firstly far sightedness a hypermetropic person can only see the distant objects that is the objects which are far clearly by using accommodation secondly their near point of vision moves away with time and the patient may have sometimes problem in viewing the nearer objects due to excessive use of muscles of accommodation these patients experience asthenopic symptoms like headache tiredness and fatigue of the eye and also discomfort the basic principle of treatment of hypermetropia is optical correction by using a positive power convex lens that will bring all the rays to focus exactly on the retina the next error of refraction is myopia myopia or short sightedness is a type of refractive error in which the parallel rays of light coming from infinity are focused in front of the retina with accommodation being at rest thus again the image seen by the person will not be clear myopia can also be of various types based upon the cause it can be axial myopia which is the most common type seen in people it can be curvatural myopia it can be positional myopia or index myopia or myopia due to excessive accommodation a person suffering from myopia will have the following signs and symptoms the person will be short sighted that is the person will be able to see near objects clearly the far point of vision is in a myopic person is at a finite point instead of being at infinity sometimes it can be as near as less than 1 meter thus a myopic person cannot see distant objects clearly the near point becomes nearer in a myopic person and this leads to less distance between the far and the near points of vision which decreases the range of accommodation basic principle of treatment of myopia is optical correction by using a negative power concave lens this concave lens will help to bring the light rays to focus on the retina The third type of error of refraction is astigmatism. It is a condition where the refraction varies in different meridia. In simple terms, the rays of light entering the eye 
cannot converge to a focal point but instead it forms focal lines broadly astigmatism is of two type regular astigmatism where the refractive power changes uniformly from one meridian to another and irregular astigmatism where the refractive power changes irregularly from one meridian to another astigmatism can be corrected by using cylindrical lens there is another condition where the normal refractive state of the eye is changed and it is called as presbyopia it is not exactly an error of refraction but a condition where the physiological insufficiency of accommodation leads to failure of near vision it usually occurs as we age thus it is also called as eyesight of old age presbyopia occurs with increase in age due to lack of proper accommodation of eye due to decrease in elasticity and plasticity of the crystalline lens and decrease in the power of ciliary muscles the presbyopic person will experience difficulty with near vision initially this will happen only in evenings and in dim light but later it will happen all the time the presbyopic person will have asthenopic symptoms also like headache fatigue due to fatigue of the ciliary muscle presbyopia can be corrected by prescription of a convex lens for use during near work the next topic is physiology of vision you already know that physiology of vision is a complex phenomena which is still poorly understood the major mechanisms concerned with vision are initiation of vision that is phototransduction which is the function of photoreceptors rods and cones processing and transmission of visual sensation which is the function of the image processing cells of retina like bipolar cells horizontal cells etc and cells of visual pathway and visual perception which is a function of visual cortex and related areas of the cerebral cortex the retina or the photoreceptor layer is the innermost coat of the eyeball it is a thin transparent membrane it is concerned with the visual functions gross retina has three distinct areas optic disc macula lutea and peripheral retina the optic disc is a well defined circular pink colored disc of 1.5 mm diameter it has only nerve fiber layer so it does not excite any visual response it produces the blind spot in the field of vision macula lutea is a comparatively dark area situated at the posterior pole of eye temporal to the optic disc it is the site of maximum visual acuity and ora serrata is the anterior serrated margin where the retina ends the microscopic structure of the retina consists of 10 layers from outside to inside these 10 layers are pigmented epithelium layer of rods and cones external limiting membrane outer nuclear layer outer plexiform or synaptic layer inner nuclear layer inner plexiform or synaptic layer ganglion cell layer nerve fiber layer and internal limiting membrane the pigment epithelial layer is a single layer that has pigment called melanin this layer has many functions it absorbs stray light and reduces scattering of light and prevents blurring of vision it eats away the outer segments of rod cells which are shed continuously it reconverts the metabolized photopigments into reusable form and transports it back to the photoreceptors also the tight junctions between the cells form an outer blood retinal barrier the next layer of rods and cones consists of outer and inner segments of the photoreceptors the external limiting membrane is made up of supporting cells like glial cells this layer is pierced by inner parts of rods and cones the outer nuclear layer contains the nuclei of the photoreceptors 
the outer plexiform layer is formed by the synapses between ends of photoreceptors with the dendrites of bipolar and horizontal cells. The inner nuclear layer contains the image processing cells, bipolar, amacrine and horizontal cells. The inner synaptic layer is made up of synapses between the axons of bipolar cells with dendrites of ganglion cells. It is the major site of processing of visual image. The ganglion cell layer is made up of ganglion cells that transmit the visual information to the brain. The nerve fiber layer is made up of axons of ganglion cells which pass through the lamina cribrosa to form the optic nerve. The last layer is the inner limiting membrane which is formed by glial cells and it separates the retina from the vitreous humor. So to make it more clear you imagine this that the light rays which entered the cornea and passed through the lens first traverses the ganglion cell layer then it goes through the bipolar cell layer and finally reach the photoreceptor layer. Now let us come to the topic of photoreceptors. Photoreceptors are the end organs of vision that transform the light energy into action potential which then travels to the brain via the various layers of the retina and optic nerve. The cones are present in high density at the fovea whereas the rods are absent at the fovea. Here you can see the differences between the characteristic features of rods and cones. There are about 120 million rods and 6 million cones present in each human eye. The diameter as well as the length of cones is larger than the rods. Rods are cylindrical in shape and cones are flask shaped. Rods are more sensitive to light and have low threshold while cones are only sensitive to bright light and have high threshold for light. Rods are responsible for night vision and cones are responsible for day vision and color vision. Rods contain the photosensitive pigment called as rhodopsin and cones contain iodopsin. The concept of phototransduction can be explained in brief by knowing the fact that whenever light falls on the retina, it is absorbed by the visual pigments namely rhodopsin or iodopsin and this causes a photochemical reaction to occur inside the photoreceptors. The various sequence of events that occur is called as phototransduction. The photochemical changes that occur inside the photoreceptors are of three types. Rhodopsin bleaching, rhodopsin regeneration and visual cycle. The visual cycle is the state of equilibrium between photo decomposition that is separation of all trans retinal and opsin protein from rhodopsin and regeneration of the visual pigments. The compound called as meta rhodopsin 2 acts as an active enzyme that activates transducin and this transducin triggers phototransduction process. Phototransduction converts light energy into action potential. The potential that develops in the photoreceptors is called as photoreceptor potential. It is unique in a sense because of the two facts. Firstly, because the excitation of photoreceptors causes hyperpolarization of the cells membrane instead of causing depolarization. Secondly, this is a local graded potential and not an action potential. So it does not follow the laws of action potential and it propagates by electronic conduction that is it directly flows to the ganglion cells from the photoreceptor cells. This finishes today's online lecture. Thank you.